Hey folks, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you're at on this beautiful planet that we call the Earth. It's uh, early here. It's so dark early here where I'm at. But you know, for some reason I've been getting up early lately. I don't know if it's because my old age, getting old. But I've been getting up real early. It works out real well because I don't have, you know, two three-year-olds and my Philippine in here interrupting me when I'm filming. Now look, that's a beautiful thing, but like I said in a previous video, you know if you have a home office trying to do any work from home, it's difficult when you got the family around. So it's good for me to get up early, set up the camera. I hope I got this lighting right. Uh, I hope you enjoy the sunflower background with the Christmas lights. Um, anyhow, get up early so I can talk to you guys. Now I just did a video, you know, detailing how my, my friend got her purse snatched over there. A little shoulder bag, lost uh, 2,000 pesos, that's about 40 US dollars. And uh, all our ID cards. Now to a local, 2,000 pesos is a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. When I say only 2,000 pesos, I guess, you know, majority of my viewers, not all, but the majority of my viewers are in the US. Um, so, you know, $40 to a tourist is not a lot of money, but $40 to a local is a lot of money. So it's whose perspective you want to look at it. So when I say it's only 2000 I guess the reason I'm saying that is because my position on getting cash, cash stolen is that it's not detrimental. Your ID cards are worth more than, than the, all that cash that she had because it, to figure up the time uh, the money, the transportation, the fees, all that stuff to get your ID cards back, no matter what nationality you are, it's going to add, add up to be a whole lot more than just 40 US dollars. Um, so that's my mindset. It's okay to take my cash, just don't touch my ID cards. You know, I'm not going to fight you over cash, but you try to take my passport, the fight's on. Uh, so, what I did, folks, I was just I was reading through some of your comments and I know the audio was kind of bad because it was coming a monsoon and I didn't realize it, but the, the microphone on the GoPro got plugged with, with water and it was muffled. So I said, you know what, let me just do a video that's, that's good audio and just talk about some of the things I was talking about, add to it. And what am I, I going to call this video here? Uh, something like how to not get robbed while bar hopping or you know how to not get ripped off while bar hopping. And this applies anywhere. Now I'm currently in Angeli City, so I could kind of tailor it to the walking street area. You know, the party area is a small area. Um, it's a linear area, basically one street, uh, with most of the bars concentrated down there on walking street. But again, you could, you could apply it to, to anywhere. So after decades, decades of hard partying, late nights, you know, Closing down the bars, uh, you know, I'm an expert on going out and partying. And so I'll just give you 10 quick tips. Now this is no, in no way all inclusive about everything you should think about, right? But again, all I want to do is invoke thought, set the forum, read the comments down below, and you'll learn more in the comments than you probably will from the video. All right, so let's get into it. Um, premise number one, it's not called a premise, principle. Uh, principle number one, one rule that I follow and when I violate this rule, it comes back to bite me every time. Number one, if I'm going out for a night on the town in a place like Angeles City or anywhere here in Southeast Asia, or anywhere where I am a tourist. Now, obviously, if you live in small town USA and you're going out to dinner, this just don't apply, right? But if you're going out as a tourist in a place like this, you're gonna be walking around, taking public transportation, in other words, like a motorbike or a trike or the jeepney or stuff like that. You're not driving your car, so you don't need your ID cards and, and your car keys and all that mess. I only carry cash, okay? That's all I carry is cash in my pocket. 
therefore, if you know something happened where it did get robbed, uh, more than likely what you're going to do is get drunk and spend all your money. Uh, but if you're only carrying cash, let's talk about the benefits of that. Um, number one, if you get in a bar and you run out of cash, uh, you're forced to go home. Um, now, some unscrupulous bars will allow you to keep running up a tab and then, you know, hound your ass back to the hotel and tell them that you owe money and try to get, get you to pull money and all that. But it's much better than rolling into a bar with a credit card, getting drunk, running out of cash, and then throwing that card down. They're going to fleece you. And it's not, it's, it's worldwide. You go to a strip club in Florida with a credit card and get drunk. Oh my goodness. You're coming out of there with, you know, two, three thousand, uh, dollar bar tab from buying all the ladies drinks and, you know, uh, getting a lap dance back in the jiggly room, what have you. And you know, like places like Florida, it's pretty clear cut. If the, if the bar says you owe the money, you either pay it or go to jail. I mean, it's pretty, pretty damn clear cut down there dealing with tourism for so many years. And a lot of dudes find themselves, you know, business trip, whatever. They go to the strip club, get drunk, throw down a credit card. And, and next thing you know, you know, they're trying to explain to their wife why they ran up a $5,000 bar tab at, at the, at the dollhouse or what have you. Right. So only carry cash. Now, I realize in certain jurisdictions, certain countries, whatever you're required to, to carry your passport. Got it. But let me tell you what. In the unlikely and slim chance that the popo rolls in and says, hey, where's everybody's passport? Or somebody asks you. You know, I'd much rather say, hey, man, I forgot it. It's back in my hotel room safe. You know, either take me to the police station until we work it out. Take me back to the, to the room. It's not a big deal, okay? What is a big deal is getting that damn passport stolen or lost, and now you're in a world of shit. Okay, so you got to weigh uh, in your own mind w w what risk you're willing to take. But when I roll out, I am not carrying my passport, even if the local ordinance says I'm supposed to. Because if you don't, you get caught at what, what you pay, you know, a $10 fine and going about your business. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but I'm just bringing it up because somebody's going to bring it up in the comments, right? So only carry cash. And then the question is, how much cash should you carry? Well, smoke. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you, my dad, you know, shout out to your dad. Hope you're doing well, man. Me and him have party for years. Uh, they say the apple don't fall too far from the tree. That's pretty, pretty close in our case. My dad had a philosophy that... You know, if you if you if you're going out on the town for a night and you think you need 500 bucks, you take a thousand, you double it, because you never know what's going to come up. You never know if you're going to meet some ladies or, uh, you know, the party just takes you on and and you know you need a hotel room, whatever, right? So his his theory is, and I say here in Angeles City, you think you're going to roll out with a uh, a nine on the town, 10,000 pesos, that's 200 US dollars. If you follow my old man's theory, he's going to tell you to take 20,000 pesos. And I realize that's a lot of money, but that's his theory. Um, yeah, it sucks if you're in the middle of partying and you really have a good time and you run out of money. Yeah, got it. That sucks. But in the same sense, it's a good thing because it protects you from yourself. Okay. It protects you from, it's sort of like gambling, right? Like if you, you go to Vegas and you got that gambling fever, you want to have some protections in place where you don't spend all your rent money for the month, right? Okay, so to recap that, carry only cash. Do not carry your fucking passport. Do not carry your U.S. driver's license. If you're taking a trike around, you don't need your damn driver's license, okay? What, what the hell you need that for? You don't need a certified copy of your birth certificate. And I talked about this on the previous video. I have a lot of friends here in Angeles City, Thailand, all over. Older guys, 65 and up. 
and wherever they go, they're carrying that big, thick leather wallet that they've had for years. It's so fat that it'll barely fold. It's got every ID card that they've ever owned, including their, their first military ID from the 60s. So, you know, certified copy of their birth certificate, eight credit cards, their fucking expired gym membership, the president and first lady. I don't even know if they're still in business. You know, you got 500 bucks in your wallet US and you got 20,000 pesos. Again, it just, what the damn thing won't fold. And what they're doing, they're acting like they've always acted. Now in America, yeah, you got to carry your wallet around. And, and these dudes here, for whatever reason, won't adapt to their environment. There's no fucking reason to carry all of that stuff around. Not here. Not when you're taking a trike, not when you're going in and out of these bars where, you know, most of them don't accept credit cards. I didn't even bring that fact up. A lot of these bars, they can't take a credit card. Now, some can, but a lot of the smaller ones, they can't swipe a credit card anyhow. It's cash only. So why are you carrying around this brick? And like I said, they, when they go to sit down, you know, they're like gimped over, leaning over like this because it's like they got a softball in their back pocket. And how many times have, you know, they pull that wallet out and everybody's looking. Everybody's looking. That thing's like a magnet. They're like, you know, people are like, holy shit, look at all that money. Look at all those credit cards. This guy's rich. It's just plum stupidity because if they lose that wallet, oh my goodness. You know, they're done. And, and you know, I see some of the tourists going out partying and carrying their passport around. Oh my goodness. If somebody takes that wallet... Or more than likely, you're just going to get drunk and you get up and you leave it, you know, in a, in a dark bar. And maybe the cleaning lady finds it or the, the guy taking out the trash finds it. And you'll be lucky if you get any of that back. Let's talk reality. Okay. So, therefore, cash and the second item that I carry, let's go to number two. The only other item I carry in my pocket is a business card to the hotel. Okay, do not carry the key to the hotel, you know, especially if it's a damn regular key, because if you lose that damn key, you know, you're paying a bunch of money. Um, so don't, like when you leave the hotel, hand your key card or the key to the front, uh, the front desk staff and say, hey, look, hold on to my keys. I'm going out partying. And when I come back in, I'll, I'll pick it back up, right? But what you want to carry is a business card at a hotel. That way, if you get drunk or, you know, you pass out because you drink too much uh, liquor, you're not used to drinking, or you pass out from a medical emergency, whatever, they know where you're staying. But there's no reason for, for you to carry the key or the key card. That's just, that's just silliness, right? It's just something else to lose. Um, plus, it forces you when you come back in. Now, most of the hotels around here, you're going by the front desk and you're facing security anyhow, right? It's not like you come in a back door. Uh, you know, like in America, if you stay at Holiday Inn Express, you got a key card, you can come in the back door. You don't have to pass the front desk. Most hotels here and in Southeast Asia, you're coming past that front desk. That's a good thing because they're going to bet who you're with. So if you get drunk and you come in with, you know, uh, three homeless people, they're going to be like, yo, wait a minute, man, you're drunk. Y'all get the hell out of here. This dude's drunk and send you up to your room. Now, hopefully that's what they're going to do. So you have to go retrieve your, your keys before you go to the room. That's a good thing. Okay. So what we got so far, we've got two principles. Carry cash, carry a business card to the hotel where you're staying. That should be all that's in your damn pocket when you roll out. Uh, principle, rule, slash guideline number three. If possible, do not roll out and party alone, okay? Roll with the coalition. Now realize if you're a lone traveler and you arrive here by yourself, you don't know anybody, you don't have any friends, I'm gonna discuss that. But the best way to party, especially in a place like this, if you're a what we call a two-week millionaire or a one-week millionaire, you know, you're a tourist who comes here for one week, with a pocket full of money, hey man, try to bring some buddies. Try to do what, uh, you know, 
I used to roll with a J-Dog, Pablo Escobar, everywhere we went. We roll as, a, as the Three Amigos, the Three Musketeers, the Dog Pound. We roll as a coalition. So if you can, try to book your, your vacation with some buddies. So, you, you know, uh, when you go out bar hopping, you can roll with a partner. You can roll with a coalition. Because if you're rolling out alone, it makes you a target while you're walking down the street. You know, people are much less likely to try to snatch somebody's bag if they're walking, you know, two guys, three guys, a group of people. There's safety in numbers. This is common sense. But if you're the lone dude, you know, at 2 a.m. walking down the road and it's dark and, you know, here you're carrying a damn shoulder bag or whatever, you're a target. If there's two of you, the odds go down significantly. If there's three of you, two, two quiz ain't going to try to rip off, uh, you know, three big American dudes. It's not going to happen, okay? But if you're alone, drunk, stumbling, uh, you're a target. So try to roll as a coalition. And you say, well, man, I ain't got no friends. You know, come coming over there alone. Uh, what do I do? Okay, now I'm not telling you to go to the nearest bar and make friends with two guys you just met. I mean, maybe that's your style, but there's also an element of risk in that. Maybe they're two local fucking weed dealers, and next thing you know, you're rolling with them. Okay, maybe that's not the safest route to go. But here's what you can do. Okay, here's option number one. Here in the Philippines, there's trike drivers everywhere. It's real easy to hire a trike driver to stay with you all day, all night, all week, whatever you want to negotiate with the gentleman. And the trike driver is like your own personal limo driver. He takes you everywhere. He also acts as sort of pseudo security. Okay, you can tell him, hey man, uh, you know, park out in front of this bar or better yet, you come in the bar with me. You know, a lot of times when I'm rolling with trike drivers, hey man, come on in. Come on in, you get a drink, you get a Coke, and we'll get you something to eat, whatever, you stay with me. That's the best way to do it. And you say how much you got to pay these guys. Uh, folks, um, just a roundabout number. If, if I'm going out a night on the town and I need somebody to stay with me all night through thick and thin, just give them a thousand pesos. That's 20 bucks. Now, yeah, you can get it cheaper than that, but if you get it so cheap, that if times get rough, you don't want the dude to dip out on you, right? If you get really stupid or you start puking everywhere, you don't want to pay these folks so cheap that they just, you know, cut out on you. You want to pay them well to where you know that that they're going to stick with you. Okay, so a roundabout number is a thousand pesos. Like if if uh, if I'm rolling out at six six p.m., I tell my buddy, hey man, pick me up. And that dude stays with me from 6 to 1 in the morning and drags my drunk ass home. That's a 1,000 pesos very well spent. 20 bucks very well spent to keep my ass out of trouble. Keep an eye on me. Make sure I'm not walking alone from bar to bar to bar and you're just a target, right? I don't walk nowhere alone uh, when I hire my trike driver. Now look, you see me on videos doing certain things, but you have to realize I live here. At the current time, I live here. Um, so I know the environment. I, I know what's going on. People know me. But if you're the lone tourist, and if I'm the lone tourist going to a place I don't know, I'm not taking the same risks that I take when, when I've been in an area and I'm familiar with the area and the people. Okay, so don't don't look at my videos and say, well, you walk around, you know, down up and down Fields Avenue, well, it's because I'm local, so to speak, right? If you're the one-week, two-week millionaire coming over here to party, hire the trike driver. He's your driver. He's your limo driver. He's security. He's going to look out for you and, and pay the guy well, all right? Don't be cheap or people might be tempted to dip out on you. Okay, so we're up to number five. I guess I said I kind of combine those last two. All right, so... Another option is to hire a couple of bar girls to roll with you. Now, whether 
you know, you meet them at a bar and you have to pay what's called a bar fine, what have you, or, you know, talk to some girls on their day off if they want to work and, and just say, look, you're paid to roll with me, go everywhere I go, make sure the money's straight, get me back to the hotel and keep me out of trouble. Okay. Now, in experience in the past, I highly recommend that you get an old, older bar girls, right? Older girls. When I say older, I'm talking at least 35 and up. If you get the younger girls and the time and, and you know times get rough, say you pass out or you know uh, need to go to the hospital or something like that, these younger girls they just dip on you. It's too much stress for them. They're not dealing with that, right? They just dip out and leave your ass. So you can't get, you know, 22, 25-year-old girl and say, hey, you know, I'm going to pay you to stay with me all night, go to uh, the bars and make sure I get back to my room, whatever. You know, just accompany me while I go bar hopping. If the, if the times get rough, they'll dip out. And so I recommend, look, and this is what Pablo used to do. You know, Pablo, when he would roll in, first thing he would do is round up three, four, five chicks and say, hey, you know, you guys going to hang out with me all week? And he would drink, he would have a great time, and he had he rolled with this coalition to make sure he didn't he didn't get himself into trouble or get victimized walking down the street because he's walking from bar to bar by himself. Okay, so so that's an option too. But get the older girls, find the waitresses. Uh the older, the uglier, the meaner, the better. Yeah, this is a Peter. Your name Peter? Do I look like my fucking name is Peter, you skunk hard motherfucker? You're not trying to marry these chicks. You just you're just basically uh, forming a coalition to go bar hopping because there's strength in numbers, right? Now, I'll say this. If you do hire some bar girls to roll with you, don't go to their bar. Okay? Say it's their day off or, or you went in there and you know what's called bar fine and whatever. Don't, don't go back to their bar. Because once they go back to their bar, it's like they're back at work. They see, you know, they're trying to hustle you for drinks and run up your damn bar tab. But if you, as long as you're not in their bar, when, when you're going to other places, they're, they don't have anything invested, right? And so, I don't know. I guess you have to kind of read into that a little bit and understand what I'm saying. But uh, just don't go back to their bar. Just go every, everywhere else. But wherever they work, don't go there. Because now you got their mama's on, breathing, breathing down your throat. Hey, get them to buy more drinks. Get them to buy me a drink. Screw that. You go to any other bar, that way you don't have that pressure. Now, I talked about what to bring with you. But if you're rolling with the coalition, what, what I like to do if my coalition is with me, give my ATM card, my credit cards to my buddy to put in his safe, in his room. Why? To protect me from myself. It's like going to Vegas, right? You don't go to Vegas and start drinking and start gambling and have free access to your ATM card. Because once you run out of money, you know, you're going to sit down at the blackjack table. You're going to start out with 200. You're going to get down to 10 bucks. You're going to make that back to 600. And then you're like on top of the world. You're going to come out of there with some money. Next thing you know, you go broke and you're like, Shit, man, let me just go get another 200. I can make this back. I can make this right. And next thing you know, you're spending the rent money for the month. So if you roll with a buddy, give him or her your ATM card and your credit card and say, hey, put this in your safe. So if I bingo and I roll back here looking for this and at 2 in the morning, I'm out trying to get a tune out of a trombone. In other words, you know, when I say get a tune out of a trombone, I'm talking about getting money out of a damn ATM machine. You want to protect yourself from that. So either put it in the hotel safe, okay, to sort of insulate you from getting that, or give it to your buddy. Now, if you're a lone traveler, you know, your only option is to put it in the hotel safe. Because if it's in your safe and you bingo, it's real easy just to run back up to your room, get your ATM card, go out there to that ATM uh, in the middle of the night, that's being circled by 20 lady boys. Now, you don't really see that too well. Not, not so much here, but if you're down on Burgos Street in Makati, historically, 
there are a bunch of lady boys down there that hang out and if they see anybody go to those atm machines around the corner uh late at night they're on you i mean they're watching they, they know you're coming out of that atm machine with what captain obvious you're coming out of there with money and they're watching and it's two in the morning they know you're drunk they know you just went into the bar spent all your money got drunk and now you're not ready to go down because you, you know you know you're gonna roll the dice keep the party going and you come out of that ATM machine, then you got four lady boys giving you a hug. Two steps later, you got no money. So, so there you go. Sort of insulate your your money, your credit cards, your ATM card from the drunk devil that's going to come out when you bingo. In other words, you run out of money in the bars. Leave your damn iPhone in the safe in your room. Do not roll out partying with a damn cell phone. I will say this, at least don't roll out with a damn smartphone of any type. It's gonna do nothing but get you in trouble, okay? If you're a hardcore partier like me and my crew are and have been in the past, you're gonna video stuff that shouldn't be videoed you're going to start uh, drunk texting everybody in your damn uh, message messenger, what they call it. You're going to text everybody you, you know. You're going to be sending out pictures and video clips on your damn Facebook feed or your Instagram or whatever the hell you're doing. Uh, showing that you're having a, a really good time. You would be tempted to do stupid shit like I have done in the past. Like go live uh, when you shouldn't. And many of my buddies, and probably you have done, many of you, some of you have done the same thing. You wake up the next day, sober up, you look at all these messages that you sent out, and you're like, holy crap. Now you got to start picking up the phone. You got to pick up the phone and start apologizing, right? Hey, had a bad night. We've all been there. It's pretty simple to mitigate that and eliminate that by not taking your cell phone when you go out partying. Now, when you get back to the damn room and dig it out of the safe, I mean, you know, you're on, <laughs> you know, you're on your own at that point, right? You have access to it. But I highly recommend if you're going out partying in Southeast Asia, do not carry your cell phone. So here's what you can do. When you get to Angeles City, you go to one of these little cell phone shops or all up and down there by Margaret Station, what have you. Go in there, for a thousand pesos, you buy you a, a talking text burner phone, whatever you want to call it. Talking text keypad phone, that's 20 bucks. SIM card is like 50 pesos, that's a dollar. You got 21 bucks invested. Uh, tell her to give you a load package. If you're here for seven days, get a load package for seven days. You know, unlimited talking text for, just say, five bucks. So let's say you're all in on communications for 30 US dollars. That's a burner phone. You can give that number out to all these girls, uh, you know, whoever you meet, whatever. You can text on that. You can receive texts. And if somebody steals that phone, or if you lose that phone in a bar, you're out 30 bucks. That's it. That's it. There's nothing else that you have lost. Maybe you lost one of the most beautiful woman in the world that you've ever met and you had her phone number in there and now you don't know how to get a hold of her a tough who gives a shit all right all you gotta do is put your put your shoes on go back out you'll find another one okay my old man said women like greyhound buses don't worry don't cry if you miss the bus about five ten minutes there'll be another one come down the road don't worry about it but if you go out with that iphone all your shit in there hooked into your bank accounts and you're sitting in a bar damn drunk fucking don't do that all right you're here on vacation you don't need to carry your cell phone around everywhere uh carry it in the day in the daytime by all means taking pictures and being a tourist but going to bars don't take your phone with you take a burner phone and the burner phone a little talking text it ain't got no camera on there which is a good thing um uh, Nobody's going to take that advice. Go to any of these damn bars. 
you know, and it's just, I guess the same way around the world. But go to any of these bars, you're going to see dudes in there, 65 year olds sitting there fucking around on their damn phone. Like, bro, you're in a bar. There's beautiful ladies all around. Okay, take that phone, put it back in the goddamn hotel room, look out, enjoy yourself, and don't worry about, you know, whatever the fuck you're doing on there. You're not handling business, you're not a neurosurgeon. Oh, by the way, you're on vacation or you're retired. Taking a phone out for me is just nothing but trouble. Now, do I carry a phone? Yeah. Why? Because I'm in the YouTube game. All right? I'm in the YouTube game. I film most videos, not all. I got a GoPro now, and I'm filming on this big Sony camera. But a lot of my phone, my, a lot of my videos get filmed on an iPhone 12 mini. There you go. Big secret. Uh, if I were not in the YouTube game, I would not even be carrying a smartphone. If I had one, I'd leave it at home. And when I left, I just carried a little thirty-dollar talking text burner phone for emergency purposes only. So there you go. Again, nobody's going to take my advice on that point. But if you're out and about and you're you're a tourist here, you're a one-week, two-week millionaire, and you lose a twelve-hundred-dollar iPhone 13, that's a big hit. You know what I mean? And oh, by the way, now you're, you're screwed up on your communications back to the States or wherever you're at. All right, so, so there you go. Just eliminate the risk and do what I tell you. $30 investment. When you're choosing a hotel, now if, if you're just a typical tourist um, and you're going to be going out and seeing the sights everywhere, okay, you're going to, it's a different story. But, you know, these tips are sort of geared towards Angeles City because that's where I'm sitting right now. So you got Walking Street, and then all the most of the bars are just linear up Fields Avenue, right? Now it's not rocket science, but if you know that all you're gonna do for seven days is hang out on Walking Street, find you a hotel as close to Walking Street as you can. It just makes things so much easier. You can walk walk around the corner to Walking Street. There's plenty of hotels to choose from there. Now, I'm not taking anything against. Uh, any of the other hotels but it's just one of those things where just being close it means less transportation less chance of you walking you know uh, alone at night and uh, just becoming a target right so if, if you know all you're gonna do is sit on walking street for a week and and party in the bars just find you a hotel somewhere in that vicinity that it is close by you know if you get way out somewhere on the lower 40 it just takes uh, more transportation time you're tempted to walk or if you run out of money and you're like ah, I'll just walk it out whatever it's just that temptation right and and you'll and you'll just take unnecessary risks does that make sense so it's just something to think about I'm not saying don't do it and if you're gonna go other places and be a traditional tourist, okay, whatever. But I just look back at the times that I came here on what we call Thunder Runs, a week of, non of nonstop partying, just nonstop partying. We only had seven days, 10 days, 14 days, and we were just gonna blow it out, uh, two week millionaires. I just look back at the places I stayed and it was just too damn convenient. You know, staying at a place like Pacific Breeze, Scorebirds, uh, hell, we stayed at Kokomo's right there. Oh my goodness, you talk about convenience. A lot of people don't know it, but Kokomo's, you know, right there at the corner, you got the, uh, the bar out front, we call that the perch. Me and my crew always call that the perch. It's prime real estate for people watching. Well, I don't think a lot of people know, but they got rooms in the back, and there's a pool back there. And up on the second deck, those rooms, those VIP rooms, they got their own little stage, dancing pole. I mean, it's some it's a, it's a party rooms up there, especially the big one, right? So uh, I just remember like one of the Thunder Runs, like we came here, we stayed there. And it was like, holy, holy shit, it was so convenient. I mean, we got these badass rooms, you got the pool, we just stumble out to the perch. We're just right there in the action. Okay, well, well I forgot to, to, to contrast that to other hotels I've stayed at. I used to stay at a place called Red Tulip, and I showed you it on previous videos. 
old ass hotel, old building, but I really liked that place because it was dirt cheap and little petty things. They had a big uh, Yeti cooler full of beer on ice at all times. Now I'm a beer drinker. I love beer on ice, right? Not over ice, but you know, pull a beer out of the cooler. So for whatever reason, the owner over there used to always keep a Yeti cooler full of uh, cold beer on ice. And it was a cheap room. A lot of times I'd just get a fan room. I mean, back in the day, I'd get a room over there for seven bucks a night. I'd roll in that place with nothing but my backpack, reach in that cooler, pull out a cold beer. That was my spot. But to, to get there, you know, you got to go all the way up Fields Avenue, cut a left at what used to be Eruptions. Now it's a, a grocery store. And you walk down that road and then cut a right. And it was very dark back there, right? Now, again, don't do as I did uh, because I know this area. I'm familiar with this area. You know, I, I know the people. I know the security guard at this hotel. I talked to him. He's watching me walk the corner. I know all this, right? But... That's a long walk by yourself, right? If you don't take a trike, if you violate my other principles. So, to eliminate that, you can eliminate that risk by what? By staying at, say, you know, when we were at Kokomo's. I don't have to walk by myself. I'm already there. The next point has sort of already been covered, but basically what I want you to do is get some type of pants with a zippered pocket. Now there's going to be a link down in the description to a video that I did several years ago. I'm looking a hell of a lot more sexy in that video than I do now. I was slim and trim, got a tan. I mean, I was just ripped. So if you want to see me looking so much better, I mean, with age, I mean, you know, get that distinguished look. But click that video and I talk about a pair of pants by Columbia called rocks and I think that stands for rugged outdoor chinos or something like that now they've got the what's called a flex rock they got a little bit of flex to them but they got this hidden pocket behind one of the front pockets with a zipper folks that thing is like a vault I have never lost anything while I've been wearing those pants I've never been pickpocketed while wearing those pants and, and they're not even like a safety specific security specific pair of pants it's just the way they're built they're a great travel pant. They're comfortable. I've been wearing them for years. Never had anything stolen. So if you have that zipper, because so many times, folks, when I'm rolling with a group and we go to get up from a bar, I always, unless I'm uh, three sheets to the wind, I always look at the, at, the, at the seat. And half the time, somebody's cell phone has fallen out. Somebody's big-ass softball-sized wallet has fallen out. And they're going out the door. They don't even realize it. Why? Because they're not putting their shit in a zippered pocket. If the pocket is zippered and you're, you know, conscious enough to zip the zipper, it's not falling out. But you go sit down. You got these girls hanging all over you and you're partying. You're getting up and down. Next thing you know, your wallet's in the dim seat in a dark bar and when you roll out you don't realize it right it's too late so check out the link it's an old video i'll also put the link it's an amazon link to the type of pants i wear and i'm not saying you have to buy them i do recommend them but just to give you an idea of what i'm talking about now listen cargo cargo pockets you know pants cargo pants whatever the hell they call them pants with cargo pockets absolutely horrible okay that's the easiest thing to pickpocket is a damn cargo pocket now if it has a, a button and a zipper maybe that's a little bit different story but that's absolutely horrible don't put your shit in a cargo pocket okay and i'm going to tell you why when you're sitting down when you're sitting down that those buttons and that zipper is easily accessible and it's not bound up it's easy Just open it up zip boom they're in your your cargo pocket if you have a zipper pocket behind your front pocket when you sit down that zipper bends i mean i can't i can't get into this pocket when i'm sitting down even if i wanted to when i when i go to get in this pocket i have to stand up straighten out the zipper straighten out the pants then get in there then zip it back and sit back down that's why these pants are, are, are such a gem 
Because when you're sitting down and that zipper's all bound up, ain't no lady boy or, or bar girl getting into your pants pocket. It ain't going to happen. But if you're sitting on a jeepney with your damn passport and wallet in a cargo pocket with two buttons, you're getting pickpocketed. It's too damn easy. All right? So, again, just food for thought. Check out the links down there. The Amazon link. You can look at the pants or go to Columbia's website or check out that video that I did. Damn, I look good in that video. I got to get back to looking like that. Uh, you know what's funny, you know? i get off topic here for a second. People talk to me like, man, you're looking rough these days. You know, I saw a video of you five years ago. Man, you were slim and trim. You were looking good. Okay, yeah. Okay, got it. I put on a lot of pounds. Everybody has. But here's one thing you ain't factoring in, Jack. Bro, that was five fucking years ago. I was five years younger. Okay? I don't know. I mean, come on. I always say these girls look better with age, and they age like a bottle of wine. Well, some women do. Uh, but, you know, I'm a pirate looking at 50. I mean, obviously, when I was 18, I look a lot better than I do now. And when I was 40, I look a lot better than when I do now. So y'all ain't figuring in that age shit, right? Granted. All right. Uh, my head looks like a pumpkin. I've been eating too much. I haven't been running. I haven't been going to Muay Thai since I've been in the Philippines. Got it. Tracking. But ain't nobody factoring in that little age issue. Don't carry a bag. Now, this only this applies when you're going to the bars at night, bar hopping. During the day, whatever. Yeah, carry your bag. You got your camera. You got all your stuff. It's daytime, right? You're a tourist. But if you're going and doing nothing but bar hopping and dancing and drinking, don't carry the bag. Okay? Now, if you follow my principles, there's no reason to carry a bag. All you're going to have in your pocket is cash and a business card from the hotel in a zippered pocket. That's it. There's no reason to carry a bag. The bag itself is a good idea, but the bag itself is also a target. Just like my girl in her little three-wheel trike. She's riding along, two shitheads, see, bag. Hey, pull over there, let me snatch that bag. If she had her money and her ID cards in her pants pocket, they would have just kept rolling. All right? Most of the crime over here, in my experience, again, is nonviolent. It's just people pickpocketing people, lady boys giving you a hug and pickpocketing you, or snatching your bag. You know, in America, they pull up, point a gun at you, give me a shit or I'll kill you, right? That doesn't happen over here like it does in America. America is a much dangerous place than Southeast Asia, trust me, all right? You don't need to carry a gun over here. You just need to be smart where you don't get pickpocketed or get your bag snatched. Uh, pretty simple, right? So at night going to the bars, leave your bag at home, even if it's a small shoulder bag. Um, why do people here wear shoulder bags? Let's, let's, let's step back. In America, if you're wearing some type of little sling bag or shoulder bag or whatever, people call that a man purse and make fun of you. All right, okay, got it. But in America, guess what? You have a vehicle everywhere you go. Um, you keep all your shit in your vehicle. Most of the time, you can't walk around in a pair of uh, shorts or a bathing suit or board shorts, right? Because you have to dress properly because of the environment. Well, over here in the tropics, or if you're living at the beach, guess what most people wear? They, they wear a loose pair of shorts and a tank top and flip-flops. It's hot. Okay, well, try to put a big old wallet in your bathing suit. It's too heavy to drop your damn trousers down to your ankles, and you're standing there looking like an, like an idiot, right? That's why people here wear bags. It's hot. They're wearing light, loose clothing. So it's easier to put your stuff in a bag and carry some type of shoulder bag uh, man purse, whatever the hell you want to call it, you know, I carry a satchel. Why? Because your overall clothing will not support a cell phone, a wallet, your keys. You know, imagine, get, put your bathing suit on, put your running shorts on, put all that, put all that shit in your shorts. Uh, it's too much weight. Therefore, everybody in the tropics carries some type of little shoulder bag. Uh, it's just a way of life. But when you go out, leave the shoulder bag at home. You don't need it. You need cash and what? The business card of the hotel. Now the last one is that I wrote down has sort of already been covered. 
but say you don't take my advice and you don't hire a trike driver to roll out with you and stay with you while you party throughout the night and make sure you get home or you don't hire some bar girls or some ladies that you met whatever just to you know roll with you with as an entourage so you're not alone okay i got it but the simple principle is just don't walk alone at night you take a trike everywhere you move from point a to point b get in a trike now if you're on walking street i'm not talking about that but say you're on walking street and you want to go all the way up to say night moves right that's a long way so most people are going to take a trike but make it a 100 percent you're going to take a trike you're not going to try to save that three bucks and hump all the way up there by yourself at night take the trike you're going from Walking Street to uh, uh, to the SM at night. Now, do I walk over there alone at night? Yeah, but again, I live here. I know the area. I'm not here on a seven-day thunder run. If you're here on a seven-day thunder run, you got more money than time anyhow. Take the track. Pretty simple. Three bucks, 150 pesos. So any of those times where you're thinking, ah, I just walk down there. If it's at night and you're drinking, take the track. Pretty damn simple. Because what did I say earlier? Alone, drinking, nighttime, you're just setting yourself up to be a target. If you take a track, how are they going to get you? Pretty damn simple, right? Captain Obvious, but uh, again, I'm just here to invoke thought. It, it seems like if you're going to come over here as a two-week millionaire, invest a little bit in being smart. I could use the word security, but just invest some of that money in being smart. Because if you lose that bag or that passport or that wallet or your cell phone or whatever, you're out a shit ton more money than if you just fucking invested some money in being smart. And, you know, hiring a trike driver... Or some chicks to roll with you to keep you out of trouble. Somebody asked a question, and this this has to come from within. I'll just talk about it. What what I would do and what I'm willing to do. Somebody asked the question. They said, you know, if if, if you were to get robbed or or what have you, should you just give it to them to avoid any type of violence? Look, in most cases, the answer is yes. All right, even though I say passports and ID cards and all that's a pain in the ass to replace they're not worth your life they're, they're not worth you getting stabbed uh, even getting punched in the face it's not worth it all that shit can be replaced it just takes time and money and, ha and a hassle but if somebody punches you in the face and knocks out a tooth <laughs> that's a lot worse than getting your passport replaced right so all that has to come from within um, Again, you don't see the violence here. You don't see people pulling up, sticking a gun in your face like, like happens in America. So it's just a different type of, of uh, criminal activity. So that has to come from within. Now, let me go deep here. And maybe, I'm not, I'm not going to mention any locations, okay? I'm just going to say here in the Philippines. I've heard stories where... These older expats who live by themselves, when I say older, you know, 65 and up, 70-year-old guys, 75-year-old guys living by themselves in a small apartment. I've heard stories, and whether or not it's true, who the fuck knows? I'm sitting on a bar stool and the guy's telling me the story about what happened, right? That, and, and, and this was more than one occasion, I've heard basically the same story, where the old expat wakes up in the middle of the night and there's a Kuya in his room going through his drawer or whatever, rifling through his wallet. And their course of action is to just lay there and be quiet and wait till he leaves. Let him take what he's taking and let him leave like he, he don't know he's there. That story, when I heard it, was shocking. It was shocking to me that that's what the gentleman reportedly did. And I was like, holy shit, how can you sit there and watch a dude go through your wallet and just lay there and be still and let him let him take it and let him leave. I said, well, you know, what's the guy's next course of action? Maybe you don't got enough money and he comes over and you know starts choking you. Who who the hell knows? 
But there was that gentleman's course of action. I was like, wow, really? Um, then I heard the same story again. Uh, a little while later, I heard the same story, same deal. You know, dude, 70, 70 years old, hears a noise, wakes up, and just in low light, he looks over and sees a dude rifling through his shit. His course of action is to lay there, be quiet, let him take what he's going to take and roll out. Now, for a guy like me, that's insanity. But what you have to do is put yourself in the shoes of the person and look at it from their perspective. Okay, once I look at it, you know, say I'm 75 years old, I got health problems, certainly can't fight, you know, a 25-year-old shithead. If I wake up and confront him, what's going to happen? Maybe the guy runs away or maybe he punches me in my face and, or stabs me with a knife. And I think that was their perspective. That is not my perspective. That is not my course of action. And you just have to put yourself in their position at their age uh, and, and think about it for a minute. And some of us ain't never going to go down like that. Some of us will never, never go down like that. That would not happen in my house. I'll, I'll tell you right now. I just, I would not leave fate to whatever that shithead is going to do next. No, that's not going to happen here. But that's what happened. And I've heard that story more than once. Uh, so anyhow, so, you know, if you get approached on the street, should you just give it to them? Folks, if it's cash and a business card to your hotel, here you go, motherfucker. Enjoy yourself. And I drop it on the ground. Drop it on the ground and run. There you go. And then you get these two shitheads over there. <laughs> you know, like fucking... <laughs> well, whatever. That's my course of action. Now, again, if you try to take my passport, that's a different story. I got to take a different course of action. Um, but is it worth getting injured over? No. All that shit can be replaced. So, again, I don't have all the answers. I never claim to have all the answers. All I'm doing... Is invoking thought in you, the potential tourist, world traveler, expat, nomad, whatever you want to call yourself, and giving you food for, for thought and to open up the forum down below in the comments. And you'll learn more in the comments than you learn from this video. That's usually what happens. And I learn more from reading the comments than uh, I knew to begin with. So there you go, folks. I don't know what I'm going to call this video. 10. 10, 10 tips to think about on how not to get your ass robbed while partying and drinking. I don't know. Something like that. I'll figure it out. Folks, if you're not a subscriber on my channel, right down there, bottom right hand corner of your screen, I want you to hit that Overstay Road sign. And then something about a bell is going to pop up. You ring that bell like Rocky. Yo, Adrian. It's me, Rocky. Who's that ringing that bell? Anyhow, if you subscribe, I'll dance at your next wedding. All right. See you guys on the next one. Peace out. And I'm out of here. Force G's waking up, so I got to go. <laughs> he always wakes up first, me and him hang out. So I'm out of here. See you guys later.